Hi, so here is a video on uh, the second um, article, and uh, I suggest that you might be reading it these, in this order as well. Uh, this is by, by Hal Colbatch, who, who has written a lot about policy, and I find in a very critical and interesting way. Um, central to this article is the question with the brilliant kind of title, What, works, what Work Makes Policy, right? Um, it has informed this, this this kind of question and this this kind of challenge as as he pros, he proposes here between the distinction of how traditional instructional textbooks and and texts have talked about policy and the experiences people have um, of policy has I think is really significant and significant particularly if we want to to bring to approximate policy into the lives of, of those working in whatever environment, in our case, educators working within schools or community environments, right? So, so the idea of, of, you know, am I enacting policy? Am I a policy maker? And, or as Colbatch would say, what kind of work does constitute policy? You know, what kinds of things do I do that might end up becoming policy? How and when am I part of a policy process? In what ways do I act uh, when, when those um, are in place? And, you know, what kinds of policies am I organizing, right? If you th think back of, of, uh, of Patrick Jones, hard or soft policies, right? All those, I think, are, are really significant uh, questions that they have really had an important impact on the way in which I have tried to write about policy. So if you <clears throat> if you go back to chapter three of my book, the idea of, of linking consciousness, right, conscientization, um, reflexivity, uh, participation and activism are a nod to this kind of thinking. That, that articulates that, that the point of policy is not just it's kind of a detached uh, scientific approach to, to policy, nor just a traditional um, kind, of, kind of advocacy for something, but also all the stuff in between, the procedural and processual stuff that happens in between, how we function uh, in kind of daily process of making choices, right, and go back to, uh, starts this this article talking about the idea that the policy is really about uh, making choices, and we talked about that in a seminar before. But these 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 choices really, and these choices have you know can be at times strategic. How do I get there? How do we develop this over time? Uh, who are the, the the key stakeholders? How do we fund? What are the agencies? What are the processes? Um, how do we communicate, right, all that, but they are also symbolic, right? What is that we're valuing at this point, right? The, the, the idea of, of, for instance, today about policies related to kind of racial disparity, um, they, they, they emerged out of, of uh, at least in North America, out of a significant you know, moment in time. Uh, and now we see institutions, organizations doing a number of things, right? From the just a statement and going on business as usual to real kind of uh, trying to reorganize the kind of policy structures for hiring, for, um, you know, kind of structural failures and kind of changing the nature of work, um, kind of rethinking curriculum, right? So, so really the symbolic aspect of, of, of policy, what that signals, how that communicates, not just through the policy, but by creating a discourse and a language around, right? And how that then uh, has an implication to the kinds of kind of uh, uh, processes that there are in place so that we start seeing that it's not just about writing the report or having the information or having you know the better information the more convincing information but it's also about all the other um, kind of elements right that that they're very personal they're very humane as as the the first quote uh, of, of the book on page 310 articulates that, you know, the people that actually engage in the process describe policy processes constituted not by order and rationality, but by uncertainty, interpretation, contested meaning, power, volatility, compressed views of time and space, partial information.
right? The constant paradoxical aspect of that. And what that demands is our participation. And I think that that is one of the central key messages that, that Colbert artic articulates here. I think he also um, offers a really kind of brilliant way and very quickly to articulate the multiple streams uh, that might be happening, where policy might be um, or you know, kind of taking place, right? And, and the, the different objectives or the different principal preoccupations of these streams, right? So he uses the case of the swine flu to kind of articulate how people and, you know, scientists looking at this have, you know, are part of a longer process that is a continued process of dealing with different things that come along. Uh, but where the game, main objective is to advance science, to, to kind of improve health uh, parameters, right? And that's how they function through that kind of policy element. Uh, kind of people in the middle, that's, that's the kind, you know, the officials and public agencies, they are there, as he talks about, and so, the, you know, the first is the problem stream, the second one is the policy stream, there's how and what can we do about that? And their work is, how do we manage to fit this new up, um, upbreak, swine flu, and we can think about COVID in the same way, within the parameters of, of health um, agencies and structures, right? So how do we fit these new contingencies into something that's already working? And what are the processes that this new contingency can impact change the ways we do business, right? And with the ways we, which we see business as usual. And then the last stream, which is politicians, which has been, you know, an amazing in terms of COVID, uh, in terms of the kind of colossal failures of this, right? Where, when the political stream, the issue is, how do I take advantage of this? How do I communicate this better? How do I, you know, serve the, the you know, less cynical way the, of, you know, the, the goals of my own constituency, right? And, um, and, and those things, really significant policy change occurs when these, or, and we can have different examples of these streams kind of come together, right? Or a few of these streams come together and create a sense of, of development that, that, can, that can lead to now hard, larger, big picture policy change, right? And this is what, what, what Kingdom has, has talked about, streams and windows, you know, policy streams and policy windows, right? Windows are opportunity to kind of where these, the, the kind of a conjunction of, of action, and this is w w what I speak about in my in chapter three as well, and in chapter four about entrepreneurship and in terms of activism is not just our own activism, which we have done traditionally educators and music educators in a kind of a very lonely way, in a very kind of uh, you know trying to to articulate this issue of uniqueness of our work. Uh, and how I think that that has, has been actually detrimental, right? Because the work is, how do we intersect the work that we do with other and perhaps larger um, you know, policy concerns, educational policy concerns, social policy concerns, cultural policy concerns, in, in, in a kind of equity policy concerns, right? Uh, and, and how through that amplification, we might connect to other streams that are emerging and actually have a much stronger impact on that process. So I think that it's interesting to me, at least, and I hope that you find that as well, you know, wh what are these other opportunities for linkage and or at least to understand kind of these different kind of streams of processes and be able to recognize when a window is apparent or to be able to work toward creating potential windows, right? By communicating, by connecting, and by aligning others also to join the work that we're doing. And in that matter, amplifying and create more significant or more immediate uh, or more directed change uh, in whatever work we're doing.